So the sermon this morning is titled, Stay Hydrated. I saw a tweet this week. I've been spending a lot of time on the internet. I think we all are spending a lot of time on the internet. And so I saw a tweet that said, what a year today has been. And that sums up my feelings about the past week. Every single day felt like a year. Mm -hmm. A year's worth of work, a year's worth of news, a year's worth of anxiety and exhaustion. The amount of information we've had to process in just a few short days is staggering. News about COVID-19, it just keeps piling up. Infection numbers, school closures, travel restrictions. It is natural to feel overwhelmed by this onslaught. If you take nothing else away from this morning, know that you are allowed to feel however you are feeling. And it's important for us to talk about it and to continue gathering however we can. So this morning, we've said it already, but I'll say it again, I'm grateful for this technology that allows us to be together in some way and to gather in worship in the midst of uncertainty. And it's also important to name that this global pandemic stirs up more than we might initially realize. There is, of course, the overwhelm of the news and the anxiety, and there's also very real suffering for people who are sick and real grief for those who have lost loved ones. But the emotional impacts, they go even wider than just that. If we consider the disappointment and even grief that comes with cancellations, missing out on significant life markers that you had planned, canceling vacations or trips that you were really looking forward to, the anxiety around our jobs and our finances, our education. There's hurt and trauma of being stigmatized, The pain of not being able to gather together physically and socially like we're used to. It's an emotionally turbulent time, right? We need to name that. We need to talk about it. I suspect that many of us are feeling maybe a little weary this morning as our anxieties and fears have sort of compounded day by day. So the question I think on many of our minds this morning is what do we do? What do we, as people of faith, do in this moment? I think we need to recognize that we're closer than we think. This global pandemic has made us hyper-aware of something that has always been true. We are interconnected, right? We're connected to one another. We're connected to creation. COVID-19 makes clear what can often be easy to ignore, or forget, especially for those of us who are privileged. Mm -hmm. What happens on the other side of the world, what happens on the other side of the border, what happens on the other side of our city or our street, it matters for all of us. Now, this has always been the case. We just are maybe noticing it more right now. And we have to keep it in mind even after this social isolation and distancing has come to a close. Because increasingly, we're going to be called to act upon not just as a church community or as a body politic. We have to be global citizens. We're closer than we think, right? A fact that applies not just to public health, but also to issues like gun violence and racism and climate change were closer than we think. And Jesus knew this. We can see it on display in today's scripture readings. I know it was a bit of a long one, so I'm going to recap it briefly for all of us. So Jesus and his disciples, they've been traveling as Jesus is on his ministry. And they take a little pit stop in a region called Samaria. The disciples go off to buy some snacks. It's important, especially now, for us to have good snacks on hand when we're hungry. And Jesus takes a moment to rest at a well. And after a while, a woman comes to draw water. And Jesus and this unnamed woman, she doesn't get a name, which is always something that I take note of, they have a rather witty conversation. 
during which Jesus demonstrates that he knows this woman. He intimately knows her, her life and her history. And he then tells her that he has come to provide her and all people with living water, the living water of God. And when the disciples return, they're surprised to find Jesus talking to this woman. It's out of the ordinary. The woman, however, goes off to tell the entire city about this man she has met, who she thinks could be the Messiah that they've been waiting for. There are three points that I want to pull out of the text this morning. Three points that I hope can encourage all of us during this time. So point number one, this text illustrates the importance of rest. At the start of the story, Jesus is taking a break. He's been on a long journey. He's tired out. He needs to take a moment to be still, to eat, and to rest his body. And let me tell you, if the Son of God needs to rest, mm -hmm. then goodness gracious, so do we. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, we need to rest if we feel sick. We all know by now it's critical to stay home if we're feeling ill. But all of us, all of us need and deserve rest right now. We need to rest our bodies and our immune systems. We need to keep one another healthy. But also we need rest just for our minds and our weary spirits. So, what would Jesus do, right? Remember those bracelets? Let Jesus be your guide. It is good to take breaks if and when you can. Go for a walk to get some fresh air. Put limits on the amount of time you spend scrolling through Twitter and news sites. Pull out a puzzle or a board game and turn your attention to that for a little while. Pray. Meditate. We all need rest in order to keep going. Point number two. The scripture demonstrates that we're called to connect rather than retreat, especially when it comes to the most vulnerable. We need to connect virtually, right? Connect virtually in love rather than retreat in fear. It's hard for us to grasp the full transgressive nature of what Jesus is doing in this text, of the interaction between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. But trust me, this conversation, it's against the norm. The Jewish people and the Samaritan people didn't regularly interact. Even the woman is kind of confused why he's talking to her. And on top of these cultural and religious differences, she's a woman. A woman by herself. So they're having a conversation that breaks all sorts of social codes. Their interaction, it's so abnormal that the disciples are astonished when they return from their errands. They can't believe what Jesus is doing. They don't even really know what to say. They're all kind of standing around wondering what in the world is going on. And isn't that too often the case? No. That the people who call themselves followers of Christ are the ones who are missing the point of what Jesus is doing? In this moment... Jesus is reaching across boundaries and across stigma. Y'all know that's a theme in the gospel, right? Jesus is constantly involving himself with the vulnerable, talking to the people that society least expects, talking to the people who even his followers least expect. And look what comes out of the conversation. This woman, she goes on to preach. She goes on to tell her entire town about this man Jesus who she's met. This one unnamed sassy woman. I don't know if you noticed in the text, but she's going back and forth with Jesus. She's pretty sassy. I love that. This one woman is a catalyst for an entire town-wide movement. That never would have happened if Jesus had stayed in his bubble, if he hadn't reached across the margin. As Christians, we should always be thinking about the vulnerable, and we should always stand up against marginalization and stigma. So let's think about that for today's context. How will our actions impact those who are most likely to fall ill? How are we reaching out to those people in our communities? How are we accounting for those who don't have stable housing or medical care? How are we treating our siblings of Asian heritage and descent are we considering the economic impacts 
for the people who are in industries that are going to really fall short during this time? Are we considering the impact of school closures and food insecurity? I don't ask all these questions to overwhelm us. I just want to remind us that we have to be thinking of ourselves as partners in this, not as enemies. Jesus forms a partnership with the woman at the well, a partnership where there might have been animosity or ignorance. In times of crisis, it is really easy to start blaming people, scapegoating. And in fact, we know that that is happening now. So what will we do as Christians to respond in ways that connect in love rather than retreat in fear? Here are just a few ideas. If you aren't medically vulnerable, see if people in your community need help getting groceries and supplies. Donate money to local food justice programs that are working to keep people fed. Speak up when you hear anti-Chinese or anti-Asian rhetoric. Support local businesses that are hurting. Call your fellow church members. Pray for one another. Finally, point number three, stay hydrated. This scripture centers around water, a meeting at a well. Water is necessary for life. And again, to take care of our bodies, we need to stay hydrated and drink a lot of fluids. But we also have to stay hydrated through the living water of Christ. Jesus says that if we drink this water, we'll never be thirsty again. Our souls will be satisfied. If we come to his well, it will never run dry. The living water, Jesus says it creates a spring within us, gushing up to the eternal life. It's the way that we connect with the divine that is in us and around us in all of life. The living water of God, it's present to us in all times. But it's perhaps most palpably needed in moments like this. So come drink this water. Come sit by this well. Be reminded that yes, things are different and maybe a little scary, but yes, God is present. God has walked with God's people through uncertainty time and time again. The Holy Spirit flows in our midst. And Jesus sits by that well to welcome us, each and every one of us. So this morning, drink deeply. Be still. Know that God, the great I Am, is with us always. Amen. Amen.